I really don't know how people get married. I gotta give it to you if you're married. I don't know how you do it. And people are like, don't you wanna get married and have kids? I'm like, no, I really don't wanna bring a kid into this world. Not because the world is bad, because kids ruin everything. I gotta be honest with you. They do. Kids are creepy. I don't like them. The scariest horror movie I've ever seen had a little kid in it. The one with Bruce Willis, The Sixth Sense. I don't need some little kid walking to the house and be like, I see dead people. Because I know the way I am. I'd look back at the kid and be like, oh yeah, I see foster parents. What would you do? Well, that's the question we're going to get into now. A New Jersey municipal judge who was also an established stand-up comedian recently resigned from his position as a judge after the state Supreme Court ruled that he can't do both. Okay, cue all the lawyer jokes. Now, in their decision, the court said that some of the justices questioned whether or not the public could separate the judge from the roles that he played, not just during stand-up, but primarily that he played on that ABC hidden camera show, What Would You Do? Now, on the show, he occasionally portrays, obviously, in character, homophobic or racist characters. Justices said the two careers were, quote, incompatible. The man himself, Vince Sicaria, joins us now to explain. And... Um, did you expect the ruling that came down? I, I certainly expected to lose the case. Uh, I didn't think it would be a 7 nothing decision. I figured a couple of justices would look at this rule and say, well, you know what, maybe it's time for a change. Maybe it's time we revisit it. The court's very traditional, but <laughs> these are untraditional times. So I, I was hoping for someone to dissent. I was a little surprised that no one dissented. Um, for those who haven't seen the show, what would you do? Intentionally sets up scenes here where an unsuspecting public is asked, um, uh, you know, to make a decision if they're going to intervene or not when there's an uncomfortable situation. They set them up here where whether it's there's a homophobic scene being played out or, or there's a scene here where someone's, uh, you know, uh, doing something wrong to a patron that they're not suspecting, etc. It's trying to see where the line is for the general public. A and you, as an actor, uh, you played some of those roles. Do you understand the contention by the court to say, wait a second, if a juror is sitting in there and they see you and they saw the show and then they're asking you to uh, be basically the arbor of justice, that it would confuse potentially a juror? With regards to the TV show? Yeah. No, I didn't see that. Um, I think the public knows in, in most situations, take reality out of the realm and, and what would you do is not a reality show. Uh, I, I think the public understands that we're acting, we're portraying roles. I mean, anyone that watches the movie American History X and you see Edward Norton, no one is walking away from that thinking, oh my God, I can't believe he was a Nazi. I didn't know all these great movies he does. No, no one has that perception. No one believes Johnny Depp is really a pirate. I mean, we know that this is an actor playing a role. Now, you, you take... But is it different when you're wearing a black robe? I, I don't think in that situation it should be. I would understand it more from the stand-up end. Uh, for people that would see me perform yeah. on stage, yes, that's my material. I'm writing that material. Now, if someone wants to view that material and say, well, you know what, joke or not, you know, this is coming from an, his, his inner thought, he must believe that. That I would understand, um, but really what is a stand-up comedy club? It's, it's really the last bastion of free speech that we have in this country. And if a person walks into a club and they don't understand that that's humor, and they believe that that's you know, this embedded thought process or embedded beliefs, well, then you shouldn't be in a comedy club. I'm just curious, did you, did you have a wig or any disguise or anything like that when you were on the, on the show? Because no. watching the clip of you doing stand-up, it didn't look like the exact, you, you looked a little different. I mean, you're dressed casually here. I, I can see there being a difference between seeing you in the, in the club or, or seeing you on the bench. But you, you would look just like this. You would dress just like yourself. And Yeah, I mean, I never wore a suit on stage, so it's not like, you know, you, was, you noticed uh, was me the as issue, a, a business Was student. the issue your, your other career, or was it just the, the appearances material. on what you would, on, on what the would you The content was, was, it, was it the Was it the show, or was it your, your second career? It was, it's both. It's the fact that, you know what, if someone saw me on the show, someone saw me on stage, they would say, well, you know what, we don't know if this is held to our standard. The, the thought process with the canons is judges in the state of New Jersey are held to a higher standard. There is something to be, you know, and again, I, if I live to be 100, I spent a, almost a quarter of my life as a stand-up comic. So when I say, take this for the grant, when I say the frivolous nature of stand-up, and okay, compared to the absolute, oh my God, status of a judge, as a, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit as, as, a, as a comic, once a comic, always a comic, and that's my wife. Uh, I, 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 I almost see where they're coming from. I do, with all respect. I, you know, know, I, it's I like understand the canon. I understand why it's there. Yeah. But at the same time, I think what we just do in this country in general is 
we say, you know what, 80% of the people can differentiate. There's the 20% that don't. You know what, we have to protect that 20%. Right. And I think that's the problem basically that we have here. Isn't it time the 20% catches up to the 80%? Because what we tend to do mm. in our society is we, we always look to protect someone. Well, who are we protecting here? We're protecting that one random person that's going to happen to see me on stage, mm. happen to get caught yeah. in South Hackensack and charged with a crime, happen to wind up in front of me and say, wait a minute, this is the guy Did who I You know what, Vince, you know what surprised happened. a lot of folks, I think, it surprised me a little, was the case itself and the mood lighting, but also the decision you made. In the, which to give up? Yeah. Was it a tough call yeah. to say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the mic, but I'm gonna give away the rope? It, it was a disappointing decision in terms of whether it was a tough decision. It wasn't in the sense that I've been doing both of these careers, lawyer and entertainer, for 16 years. I've left a lot of money on the table in terms of partnerships, in terms of potential law jobs, to struggle as a solo practitioner so I can run back and forth to the city, do auditions during the day, uh, tape a what would you do episode. I mean, I, I was offered a, a position in a firm where they had my name on the door, pulled it back, we sat down, we spoke, and yeah. I said, okay, so long as I'm allowed to do all of these things, we can have a deal here. What will you miss most uh, about the bench? I, I think I made a difference. I, I really believe when I sat on that bench, you know, where we're held to a higher standard, I never saw myself as someone different than the people standing in front of me. I think we're all the same. The only difference is I've attained a level of status in my profession that puts me in front of you. I have a certain level of expertise with regards to the law, but in the end, you know what? I could be the person in front of me. I could be the person who went 10 miles over the speed limit. You know, I could be the person who parked illegally. By the way, you did know? you ever use any of the cases in your stand up routine? Uh, never. <laughs> Absolutely Even never. If you Even the if names. you did, yeah, exactly. No. And you sped on the way here, didn't you? <laughs> Tonight you were that guy. I, I mean, no, I, I, would, I don't believe. The two careers have anything to do with each other, and uh, to be quite honest, I never needed the material from my You know, though, profession. we want you um, to stay with us because when we come back, there was a chain of uh, a, a, a bunch, bunch of different stories out there mm. that I'd love your perspective as well as the tables on. Stay with us, everybody. Uh, we talked about, obviously, that tragedy that happened uh, on the West Side Highway that led to the paralyzation of a motorcyclist, but the question is, how should he and they be dealt with here? And should there be civil exposure for the driver who ran over him or not? We'll get into that and more right after this.